Hi, man, Joe Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. I think if you're like me and you're holed up in the hole, is that even a thing? If you're at home anyway and you're in lockdown and you need to keep in touch with the outside world and your internet went down, you would be really quite happy to have an old wireless. And this is a Sony seven band receiver. Look at the goodness of that. It can do loads of things. FM, medium wave, short wave, and well, I think that's it pretty much. Tone control here, look, news, low, high, volume, five, Look, five different megahertzes of shortwave. <laughs> you can see that's my, my knowledge of it. No, but you can see there's shortwave gauge here. You've got actually five different bands. And there's your FM band there. Antenna, not snapped off. Um, <laughs> world map on the back. And it's a nice little metal grill here. And I have to say, this thing has been in my family forever. This is an ICF 7600 apparently. It's been in my family forever and it was always there, always working, always, um, you know, you just turn it on, it would still work. And this was up to like years ago, maybe a decade ago when I last tried this and it just worked. So I've never really thought about this, but it doesn't work now. Um, I think it lost a knob and I, I think I found this off something else I was messing with and it kind of fit and it kind of worked. So I kept that for now, I might 3D print something better. But um, I want to open the battery and it won't open. I think whatever's gone on in there has gone on bad well bad so i'm like how the hell do i get this off because this even this metal plate's coming off it's all bulging and breaking and i don't want to be the the guy the family member who let this die so i'm hoping there's something to salvage this radio because uh, um streaming services aside uh you know we've been in the house about a week now probably more like a week and a half, nearly two weeks self-imposed before the government really started uh, making you stay at home. Um, and uh, I have to say the streaming services aren't great. I, I think you kind of start losing touch with reality because you, you get to choose, pick and choose, don't you? Uh, your, your content and you end up just kind of binge watching crap or whatever. You don't seem to focus on the news or current affairs and things in the same way. So I thought the the old radios are the, are the key and I can see in there, we're getting this loose. Um, so yeah, it would be nice to, to get things like this working. Oh, okay, so that popped up. I don't know if that helped, but just that pops up to give you a little bit more angle on. Oh, <gasps> that was good. That was a good start. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a bit because there's a lot of detritus potentially here. Yes, I'm really pleased that it's not screwed on the bottom. Wow, I thought there could be a screw in the battery bay. And it does look, look, these batteries have date codes on them, so that's nice. And that's, that's okay too. Look, the batteries say March 2008. So not, you know, it's not, it could, they could be older batteries in there. And it has this sort of hand hand weaved vibe about it. So I'm just going to hold it over the bin here and just chuck these out. In fact, let's chuck them in this paper cup <laughs> rather than loose in my bagless wicker bin. Oh, oh. They do have a bit of battery juice on them. Ah. We could be lucky here. I think we are lucky. Um, I'm not seeing too much corrosion on its parts. So let's have a little zoom in there. I'm going to reach up to the shelf and just grab me some batteries. And also some flux clean, as if we're going to clean the PCB. So the first thing to do though, there is some loose powdery nastiness in here. <laughs> now we've got rid of that. Then we're going to take the flux clean and where you've got these crusty contacts we're just going to spray a bit on there just to clean them up. Wow I'm really rather impressed. I don't know if that's testament to the materials Sony used in its construction or, or just the battery chemistry. You know I don't know which causes the worst damage in terms of corrosion but it's certainly not very corroded at all. We can have a little look at that battery door as well to see why that wasn't opening because 
Ah, oh, to be honest, we could just undo two screws each time to change the battery if it looks like it will break in trying to fix it, but hopefully we won't have to resort to that. And uh, I've seen this before, you get these sort of foams in things and they've sort of, they just totally disintegrate all of these foamy things. In fact, let's have a quick look at that battery door. Look there, there's a bit of, it looks like a bit of cardboard that someone's stuck in there. Look at that to uh, maybe pad it out a bit. Maybe they're rattling around. Range of car bat. So it's just a bit of the old battery box, I guess. So I'm just going to dust this off in the bin. This is because it's, yeah. Because all of that just turns instantly to dust. It literally is dusting it off. Ah, and there it's actually okay. So there's no real issue with that. I kind of think before we put it all back together, because I've no doubt it's just going to work. Let's see if we can just admire this a little bit, because these things are always fascinating to me. So if you see there, when I turn the knob, so many bits of string move on those pulleys. Look at that. That is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, how would you design something like that back in the day? And this was probably before they had computers. And look at that. That pulley is in an angle. It's not even perpendicular. Now, I don't know if, if that's just something because it's... I feel it, it's designed like that. It's, it's certainly um, interesting, to say the least. Sony speaker. Good. Um... That looks like a little, that's a little metal shield, I think, over uh, over a sensitive area. It's probably over the FM area. Um, and I really don't dismantle it anymore. I, uh, I think if you've got one of these and it's all pretty much in working, Nick, uh, beware how far you're going to dismantle it. I think we should reassemble it and just give this all a wipe. I think if we can clean around here, maybe again with a bit of flux clean, that'd be nice, or a better cleaner. Now, something about cleaners you'll become aware of, because you might have your IPA, your flux clean, your, your bits and bobs, whatever you, whatever you like to use. They don't really work for everything because alcohol isn't always a solvent for whatever you're trying to dissolve. So if you think about it, a solvent is a chemical that something will dissolve into, yeah? And some things dissolve into water, some things dissolve into oils. So I'm just not sure why this thing's... It's just... It doesn't even want to go back in anymore. I think the plastic's shrunk. <laughs> um, so if you try to clean something with IPA, it just might not clean up. And you'll be like, why isn't this cleaning up? I'm using the most aggressive chemical I have. Or you, know, you might be using a acetone or something. Something that's damaging plastic and things still not cleaning off. But then if you add a bit of soap and water... Off it comes, off it pops. So be really careful with that. Don't be afraid to try the softer, gentler things first. So we've got our Amazon batteries, which I think are pretty good batteries. I'm on the whole pretty pleased with those. Let's see how this door goes. Mm, that's nice. I don't, I don't know why it was so packed out. Ah, I see a glowing red light. Let's set ourselves onto FM. And we'll move our tuner around. Volume is You're low. listening to oh. J to Z, C Radio 3. I'm Julian Joseph, and I'm joined in session by another jazz piano great. We'll have more music from him in just a first his <laughs> Well, that's it. What can I say? Still works. Right. Now let's see how. Flux Clean does. Now, I don't really know what's in Flux Clean. Some of these things smell very citrusly, like they're, they're made of, you know, orange oils or lemon oils or lime, you know, like some sort of fruity, oily smell. But I kind of think could be a, a remnant from a, a production, a process of using fruits. Or perhaps they're just chemicals that happen to trigger your nostrils and give you that fruity vibe. Now I'm going to get into the nooks and crannies, get yourself a little brush, maybe littler than this, and then you can put your tissue in and just work the edges like that. I mean I'm doing it all very slapdash, you know this isn't a uh, restoration, this is just a, 
I want to get the radio working. I'm not, um, uh, I'm not being too fussy with it. If you want to um, watch a good radio restoration, I advise you to go watch Mr. Carlson's lab. Um, he definitely has some very interesting uh, and high quality <laughs> restorations, often of valve gear. So stuff, oh my gosh, look, it's like a sludge in there. Look at this, I'm gonna get in there. Ugh, look at that. Although, you know, he definitely wouldn't allow that to stay. So I think I'm gonna have to do the same. And we're going to do it with some multiple scritchings here. You can see that tissue is getting filthy, but you know, it got in there. Um, the finer the brush, I, see, I, I can't, I can't, I can't get in there. I've become scuppered. Now we're going to get that one right there. And uh, yeah, if you're doing it really cautiously, you might even avoid rubbing off all the decals. That's, you know, that's all right. I mean, it's it's kind of like we will stop ourselves catching whatever bacterial remnants are living in there. But I think a whole spray over this with a bit of pledge will uh, certainly uh, do the trick. So thank you so much for watching me recover, which is basically just changing the battery in my Sony ICF 7600. If you've got any ideas on how we can repair the... I don't know what they would have been, to be honest with you. Just the printing. It would have been like silkscreen printing on these. I mean, that's what's the shame on this. It's had years of obviously being wiped down. Um, this is in the anodizing, so it's a lot stronger. Um, or maybe just leave it alone. What do you think? Just leave it alone. It's good enough as it is. And if I'm really that keen, I'd find another one on the uh, on the eBay. Um, yeah. So answers down below. Discord, Patreon, if you're so inclined. And... Uh, you've got a good source for knobs, my little wee knob here could be improved. You can see it's got a rather bigger knob girth capacity there. In fact, oh, I always get distracted at the end of a video, don't I? Sorry, it might be tedious for you. Two, two centimeters, I would say, two centimeter girth one. Thank you very much for watching. God, it's blowing a gale out here, but I don't normally do this. Um, I've been playing with this in the house, just listening to it. It's FM is, mm, I mean, it's amazing. The sound quality is absolutely amazing. Um, but I had a uh, Skype chat with my father about this, and I said, oh, you remember that radio receiver? And we had a little bit of um, little chat about it, and I started uh, looking this up on the internet. And this apparently was the first in the line of Sony uh, shortwave receivers that they made that were kind of pocket size. You know, these are like the uh, mini disc player, MP3 players of their day. And this was the first model that was released in 1977-78, with the later model then coming out in 83. I've checked it. This is definitely the early first one because of the way the Sony logo is down here. Um, and you can still buy them today. They've got, gone more digital, but it's still pretty much the same form factor. Of course, shortwave isn't as popular in the UK and Europe as it still is, maybe in China and uh, Far East. Um, but what's fascinating about, about this, he said he thinks he was given it as a gift, and not just one. He remembers there were two in the household. So that does mean I'm going to be sniffing around to see if I can find the second one of these, to see if it's the same model or a different one and he feels it was early 80s maybe 1983 but he said it could have been as as early as 1978-79 which would make this potentially the same age as me <laughs> so isn't that nice that's fa you know fascinating and fantastic to have something that's still working that's as old as you are all right guys i'll let you go bye bye <laughs>